My name is Michelle, and thank you for joining us today for Bloomreach's Commerce Pulse Quarterly Roundtable. I'm joined by Brian Walker, Chief Strategy Officer at Bloomreach. We'll be sharing his insights into today's data with you all. As you may have noticed, we are without Suturita Valley from Forest for Research, who was meant to be out, uh, here with us today due to a technical difficulty on our end. Today, it's just going to be me and Brian, but uh, I will say, having been through quite a few of these now with Brian and knowing that he is a former Forest analyst himself, I think he will still have plenty to share. So thank you for being here today, Brian. Uh, good morning from uh, what you can tell is very dark wintry Seattle. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And I'm also sorry that Sucharita um, wasn't able to be on here this morning. I was looking forward to hearing her thoughts. I'll do my best to uh, to channel Sucharita and, and also lend my own point of view and hopefully put the numbers into some good context. Looking forward to it. Um, so for some quick background for anyone joining us for the first time here today, Commerce Pulse is a quarterly event that highlights the data we gather here at Bloomreach, where we power e-commerce experiences for hundreds of businesses around the world. This data offers all of us an understanding of the state of commerce today and gives us insight into what we can expect going forward. Today, we'll be honing in on the holiday shopping season at a high level and by sector, and we'll also give an overview of where e-commerce numbers are to date. And then as always, we will end with some predictions for what's ahead. So to kick things off, we're gonna go through the overall numbers for the holiday shopping season. So for 2022 peak holiday shopping, that is October 1st through December 15th, we saw sales and traffic down slightly in North America year over year. Conversion rate was down at 10% while average order size was up 5%. In the UK and EU, sales, traffic, conversion rate, and average order size all increased with sales most notably increasing at 9%. So for some additional context, if we look at the holiday season in 2021, so the prior year compared to 2020, we see sales and average order size up by 11 and 22% respectively in North America. Conversion rate was up 6% while traffic was down 14. In the UK and EU, sales and traffic were both up while conversion rate and average order size were down 16 and 22%. I think, oh, sorry, I think we're minutes. looking at the, the uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Now we're on the right side. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> uh, I was ahead of the game. So there's all the great stats I just gave. Candace, do you want to hop one more forward? Thank you. And then just a few additional points of interest. In North America, we saw mobile traffic increase during the holiday season while mobile spend decreased. And then in the UK and EU, both mobile traffic and spend were up. So that was a lot of numbers. I don't give credit to how hard it is to read through all that data. Everyone should get a lot of kudos for doing that. <laughs> Brian, let's um, start at the high level. What are some of the takeaways from what we saw uh, from e-commerce this holiday season? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we, I think we see the impact of, of quite a few different factors that, that impacted uh, the holiday season. And I know it's early January and we're all kind of ready to move on, but I think it's still really valuable to, to reflect back and, and kind of recognize uh, the dynamics, many of which, of course, continue to impact business. And when we get into talking about 2023, unfortunately, many of them will, of course, be persisting. You know, I think, first of all, <clears throat> you know, inflation and the overall economic environment uh, is impacting consumer confidence in a in a pretty significant way, and we see that that in in the kind of tail end of of last year, uh, the results in North America I think reflect that. It's important to recognize too that the numbers that we showed don't are not inflation adjusted. So while Europe had a very surprisingly strong result um, at plus nine percent. Uh, sales for the holiday period, which I think, frankly, is, is a bit of a surprise. If you put it into context and recognize that inflation has been running at over 10% uh, in the UK and EU, uh, really for the back half of the year, sales were also relatively flat. Uh, so we need to kind of acknowledge that. It's also important to see that, that, you know, kind of the impact of the mobile traffic kind of reflects the fact that Consumers are using digital, of course, to, to do discovery, to, to gain inspiration and decide 
whether, you know, what they're going to, what they're in the hunt for and where they're going to go um, for gift giving or obviously to fulfill different things that they're looking for for themselves. And we see that um, having some impact with traffic numbers uh, remaining relatively strong, uh, but sales obviously down. So those are a couple of key factors. Also important to recognize that there was a heavier level of discounting going on during the holiday period. And that also impacts sales because obviously you're, you're, you're ringing up products um, at a lower price point uh, and that's reflected in the sales numbers as well. Um, and then I think the, the last one I think is, is a trend that we've seen now for a number of years. And while this year I think was a, was a little different, we still see the impact of early holiday shopping. We saw that in the late Q3, early Q4 period where uh, sales were remaining pretty strong. I think a lot of consumers were getting on uh, their holiday uh, shopping lists uh, early. And that also kind of impacts some of the some of the late holiday period. So those are a number of different factors that I think are reflected in the overall results uh, from holiday. Great, thank you. Now let's dig a little deeper into that um, and look at those holiday numbers by category. Okay, so uh, in apparel, we have sales, average order size, and conversion rate all slightly down, while traffic grew 6% year over year this holiday season. Moving over to luxury, we saw increases in sales, traffic, and average order size, with traffic most notably increasing at 21%. Conversion rate was down 19%. Moving over to home furnishing, Sales were down slightly while traffic and average order size both saw increases. Conversion rate was down around 20%. And then finally in home improvement, we saw decreases in sales, traffic and average order size while conversion rate was up around 3%. All right, so Brian, let's start with apparel maybe. That's always my favorite category. <laughs> what stands out to you there? <laughs> Well, again, I think many of the things that I already mentioned, you know, to kind of reiterate, you can kind of see in those numbers, you know, with conversion rate and average order size down, we see the impact probably of some discounting going on, uh, as well as um, kind of omni-channel type of behaviors, um, consumers leveraging um, their mobile and, and web to kind of, you know, hunt down uh, products that they're uh, looking for that they may also be converting in other channels. Um, sales were down uh, 1%. Again, if we put that into the context of inflation, it was a, it was a rough holiday period for apparel, but it is interesting to see that, that, you know, sales were up 6%. So again, I think it's a, it's kind of a mixed bag uh, for apparel, uh, probably, uh, you know, a fair amount of discounting. Again, some of that omni-channel behavior um, and, and the, you know, a reflection of the fact that, that consumers were, uh, you know, being very mindful and smart uh, about their shopping uh, during the holiday period. So kind of a mixed bag for apparel. I think when we kind of turn the leaf, I think you're probably going to ask about luxury next. I think that's a very... I was going to say, you said mixed bag. Bag was the perfect segue into luxury. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Because, you know, luxury um, is a category that was really had a, a phenomenal 2022 overall. And we see that reflected in the holiday numbers as well. And that's probably a, a reflection of a couple of different factors. One, upper income brackets are not as impacted. Uh, by the economic situation um, overall. And that was certainly true uh, during the holiday period. So we see that luxury held very, very strong. I think it's also true that a lot of us, uh, a lot of consumers were getting back to uh, the sort of holiday traditions, office parties, Christmas parties, uh, weddings, a whole host of different things that are also uh, you know, drive luxury consumption. So it's sort of a, a combination of the fact that the impacts of the economic kind of environment on consumers um, varies significantly by uh, income brackets. And also the fact that people were looking forward to opportunities to, you know, to share the holidays with uh, friends and family and that probably and, and, and travel. And that probably drove some luxury consumption in addition to gift giving. 
And then what about in home furnishings and home improvement? Anything of note there? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's great to see that home furnishings has held pretty strong throughout 2022 after just tremendous surge, um, you know, due to the pandemic, right? Uh, we saw home furnishings explode as, as, as consumers, uh, you know, furnished their homes, upgraded their kitchens, really, and, and patios and, and outdoor environments, right, in response to the pandemic. And so we saw a tremendous shift in spend to that category during the pandemic. Overall, I would say home furnishings held its own and continued to do well. It's interesting to see that traffic was so strong uh, in home furnishings, up 16% year over year. But again, sales were, were essentially flat. Uh, and if we take into effect inflation, you know, it was kind of a, a mixed result for, for, for home furnishings and maybe not what people were hoping for at, earlier in the year. Again, I think that reflects some of the things we've already talked about, uh, a heavy amount of discounting um, and uh, consumers converting in other channels. Yeah. So before we um, move from holiday e-commerce and start talking a little bit more broadly, I just wanna get any final thoughts on holiday, um, particularly with trends and what to maybe anticipate in years to come um, some of the things that will persist from this past holiday season i know you've kind of already alluded to a few things but what should retailers be keeping in mind for holiday seasons going forward yeah i mean i think you know rebalancing inventories is going to be a, a a key topic i think for for many uh, retailers as they head into 2023 and kind of forecast and start to place um, you know their 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 their, uh, their inventory purchasing and kind of orient their supply chains for the back end of 2023. Uh, 2022, you know, saw kind of a reverse of some of the challenges we had during the pandemic. And many uh, retailers were over inventoried uh, heading into the holiday period last year. And I think we'll see, you know, a lot of focus on, on forecasting and trying to rebalance inventories um, in, in heading into to holiday uh, 2023. I think another key trend that we saw in, 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 in holiday last year was really a kind of a, a dramatic growth in, you know, buy now, pay later. And I think that's a response to a couple different things. One, um, consumer credit um, has really started to creep up um, you know, post pandemic stimulus and, you know, uh, kind of a reflection of, of, you know, home equity and a bunch of other factors, we see that consumer credit is really reaching uh, some all time highs. Um, and buy now, pay later reflected another way uh, that consumers could buy essentially on credit with essentially kind of an established paradigm. It kind of makes sense. It's, it's not new uh, to put something in a sense on layaway or, or to buy in that kind of incremental way. But the ubiquitousness of it and the fact that, you know, uh, you know for, for consumers, it's really become a relatively easy process with relatively low cost to the consumer, but dramatically increased cost to the retailers. I think buy now, pay later typically is going to cost a retailer almost 8% of sales to facilitate. That's a pretty significant margin hit. And yeah, you know, con consumer credit and other other forms of payment, you know, might be more in the two to three percent range. So it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. Consumers clearly um, have, in a sense, you know, recognize it now, understand it, and maybe look for it uh, in many cases. While retailers may be tempted to pull back, um, and obviously, you have to recognize that the available credit to the buy now, pay later vendor community has also become much more constrained um, with the, the capital markets uh, growing more conservative, available credit um, and venture funding uh, impacting the availability um, of, of, of the capital. So it'll be very interesting to, to watch how that, how that plays out. Other trends I think we can anticipate continuing to grow, right? The role of mobile um, as, a, as a channel continues to grow. It may be growing at a slower rate than it has in the past, but certainly consumers are, are obviously, uh, you know, leveraging their phones um, as they're out and about or as they're on the couch uh, to do more and more uh, discovery and shopping as, you know, mobile sites become even more optimized and consumers leverage mobile apps for the 
brands and retailers that they you know work with frequently. So those are a couple of things I think we'll we'll continue to see uh, you know uh, as a as an ongoing pattern, no question. Will the holiday season continue pushing earlier? I mean, like, are we going to be expecting holiday emails well into August at this point, or do we, well, have think, we kind of hit the tipping point? Well, I think you know, r- retailers and brands have a lot of incentive to try to push um, the the holidays early, if you will. Um, it it spreads out demand, it spreads out impact on their on their people and on their infrastructure. And the earlier you can sell through that product, probably the more likely it is you're going to capture the full margin uh, on that product as well, right? Versus discounting or worrying that you're going to carry clearance product, um, you know, past holiday and have to liquidate. So there's no question there's a huge emphasis and there'll be lots of cues uh, from brands and retailers, you know, starting quite early uh, to, to get a jump on holiday spending. The consumer, though, is fairly savvy. And I think even in um, you know, this year, we saw kind of a delay. The Cyber 5 was a bit of a, uh, I'd say, ho-hum uh, result relative to past years. And certainly, you know, perhaps this year really reflected uh, a, a shift, right, where maybe the Cyber 5, so to speak, right, uh, the, the weekend after Thanksgiving um, is less important um, you know, moving forward. Um, it becomes more of a, a hill versus a dramatic spike um, in, in terms of, you know, sales and in terms of traffic. And certainly retailers continue to promote heavily during that period of time to try to capture demand. So consumers are fairly savvy. And, and this year they waited longer. They weren't responding to the, to the, to, to the, to the marketing and messaging as, as much, in part because they knew that retailers were over inventoried and they may you know, be able to take advantage of, of more discounts, more sales, the longer they waited, and perhaps a bit, a bit of fatigue, um, you know, sets in as well. So we'll see. I think we'll continue to see that pattern pushed um, from a marketing perspective, but we'll have to see really how the consumer responds. And will we really see more early shopping or will it actually potentially regress um, in 2023? We'll have to see. Very interesting. All right, thank you. So let's now shift away from holiday and just look a bit uh, broader at e-commerce and the trends that we're seeing year to date. Candice, can you pull those up for us? Thank you. Uh, So in 2022, sales were pretty much flat in North America year over year. Traffic and conversion rate were down while average order size was up about 13%. Uh, In the UK and EU, sales were down 7%, traffic down around 2%, conversion rate was down 18%, and average order size was up 16%. Now, breaking that down into the categories, uh, within apparel in 2022, year over year, we saw increases in sales, traffic, and average order size with a decrease in conversion rate. Moving on to luxury, We saw that sales and traffic were up pretty substantially. Average order size was up about 6% and conversion rate was down around 2%. Switching over to, oh, okay, missing. Um, Home furnishings, we saw increases in every metric except traffic, which was down around 23%. Um, Home improvements saw decreases across sales, traffic, and conversion rate, while average order size was up. 45%, which is pretty substantial. And then in grocery, we had uh, both traffic and average order size up while sales and conversion rate were both down. And then finally, we moved to B2B, where in 2022, we saw sales up around 21%, traffic up 30%, average order size up 22%, while conversion rate was down about 24%. All right. Um, So again, a lot of data, but when we consider broader overall e-commerce this year, not just within the context of the holiday season, what should we be thinking about, Brian? Yeah, I mean, again, not to to kind of reiterate too much, but um, in North America, you know, a, a good solid performance uh, relative to the economic environment and relative to kind of retail 
uh, marketplace as a whole. When we look at the North American numbers, it is interesting to see that for the year, traffic did decline uh, almost 7%. But I think that reflects what we were all doing, right? We were more focused on services and travel, dining out, getting back to things that we had missed out on. And I think we saw uh, you know, demand in the in sort of e-commerce and retail as a whole uh, impacted by that as consumers shifted spend and, cons- and really just shifted what they were spending time on uh, in 2022, while sales held, you know, relatively flat and strong. And I think it's important to put it into the context of the overall spike uh, we saw during the pandemic, obviously, with, you know, tremendous growth uh, in the in the online and digital channels. And I think it's important to not kind of buy into the narrative that everyone's returning to store or that e-commerce kind of had its moment and now we're going back. Actually, you know, e-commerce continues to grow and the digital channels importance to driving consumer, you know, demand and as a, as a channel for discovery and inspiration only, only increases. Um, In the UK and Europe, uh, you know, obviously impacted even more dramatically uh, by the economic environment with a war in Ukraine, uh, driving energy costs up, uh, driving inflation well over 10 percent and quite a lot of turmoil in in, in a lot of different uh, aspects in markets like the UK, Uh, political and economic turmoil that really impacted consumer confidence even more dramatically. And, and naturally led to um, you know some some pretty dramatic uh, impacts. Traffic down modestly, which shows that you know consumers are still you know leveraging these channels, but sales down seven percent. And again, if we if we you know take into account inflation, uh, sales were actually down you know quite a bit more than that uh, in many respects. And we can see the impact of of inflation again in the average order size numbers overall. Now, obviously, that's a macro view. Uh, as you said, you know, as we went through the, the category numbers, um, individual retailers uh, and segments uh, naturally uh, performed uh, better. But it is true that uh, 2022 was a dramatically different year than we had anticipated heading into the year. You know, heading into 2022, uh, almost 90%, 89% of American e-commerce businesses were expecting north of 20% growth in their digital channels. The actual results were dramatically different than that, right? Um, And while um, there were winners, there were businesses that saw pretty explosive growth and there were segments and categories that saw uh, pretty tremendous growth. There were categories that that didn't do uh, quite so well or didn't do well at all uh, relative to that. And so it's kind of a lumpy result. I guess I would say um, uh, overall, but there's no question that you know consumer confidence um, had a big role to play. Uh, the impact of interest rate uh, increases, the impact of inflation, uh, and some geopolitical factors, um, you know, obviously um, ended up having a, a pretty dramatic impact on on the year. And obviously, that's persisting as we head into 2023, which we'll talk about in a minute. Can we talk about grocery briefly? I know Mm -hmm. we did not touch on that in holiday as it is not super relevant for holiday shopping, but um, what are you seeing from the grocery numbers and what's kind of your longer view on digital in the grocery world? Well, holiday, um, you know, does impact grocery uh, in in many respects because, you know, we are, you know, cooking at home or having Mm -hmm. our holiday festivities. We're, you know, throwing party. We might be throwing parties. We might be consuming a little bit more alcohol (laughs) than than it, (laughs) as we, uh, as we, as we get together with friends and family. Um, But certainly, uh, you know, grocery, again, saw dramatic, incredible growth in terms of online grocery uh, during during the pandemic. And that's, of course, specifically true in North America, where as a channel, uh, it really lagged. I think when we look at grocery, we have to say, you know, grocery is really holding its own in terms of the online channels. Um, You know, it's not true that uh, everyone has rushed back to the grocery store. We're continuing to use curbside pickup. We're continuing to use home delivery. But of course, that may be a segment of the population that may be less mobile, 
may be very busy, may be juggling lots of different uh, things within their within their families. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, it may not be that we see dramatic growth in the 2022 numbers overall for grocery, but it has more than held its own uh, as, a, as a channel as we emerged from the pandemic last year. And I think, you know, it'll be important for online retailers to not just kind of, you know, kind of set aside their online channels as a priority moving forward, that they continue to look at this as a, as a way to be a great service and to be convenient and to help consumers save time or to help, help that segment of consumers, again, who, who may not have either the time or the, the ability uh, to, you know, to shop in store as easily. Um, and so it'll be very interesting to see their, their kind of the response to the to, to that, you know, with the technology investments, but the more progressive grocers are clearly continuing to invest in their digital channels and really thinking about how to link, right, their various channels to link their, their brands, um, you know, digitally as well um, as they pivot more and more to private label or specialty foods, um, you know, post pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. And then can we just close out with, uh, any thoughts on B2B? I know we didn't dive a ton into that, but any thoughts on those B2B numbers? Yeah, I mean, I think B2B, um, you know, clearly the, the numbers were very strong uh, overall in, in 2022. And I, I think the, the reality is that reflects the opening up of the overall economy. Um, you know, many, um, you know, B2B companies fulfilling, you know, products to institutions or, you know, entertainment venues, restaurants, all of that kind of thing. Plus, you know, a relatively strong manufacturing sector where clearly, you know, B2B uh, e-commerce plays a, a key role. So with, with sales up over 20% year over year, I think it, it reflects the fact that we were kind of coming back. B2B did, in a sense, struggle uh, online to some degree during the pandemic, really in reflection, again, to the overall economy and what was happening there. Um, not because it wasn't an important channel. It's also important to note that traffic was up well north of that, uh, up almost 30% year over year. So we see that the channel, the digital channels, play a more and more and more important role, uh, you know, as, as the B2B buyer, you know, leverages the, the most convenient tools to get their jobs done as fast as possible. And I think the conversion rate impact reflects the fact that the B2B buyer is less loyal than they used to be. You know, they have the tools now to shop around, um, to find the products that they need at the price points they're looking for. And ultimately, they're going to place those orders with the businesses that are also able to reliably fulfill uh, fast and on time. Um, and of course, the average order rate uh, increase, I think, reflects both sort of some, some bump from inflation, but also the fact that more and more B2B buyers are, are purchasing, you know, higher and higher price point items. There's no longer a barrier, uh, you know, there, um, you know, in, in the mindset of the B2B buyer. You know, they're going to place the same size, uh, large orders online. And in some cases, they may even feel more confident purchasing high value, um, you know, durables uh, through the through the online channel because of the online research and validation they get through that. So. Lots, lots to read into that, um, but certainly B2B tracks the overall kind of health of the economy. Um, I mean, the offline economy in, in a sense. And, and I think we see that reflected in the numbers. Yeah, it's really interesting. Thank you. All right. So as usual, we are going to close out Commerce Pulse with a look ahead. Uh, and now we have got the holiday season behind us. So that means we're going to be looking at what is to come in 2023. So what are you anticipating for the year ahead in e-commerce, Brian? Any broad predictions or trends you're expecting? Well, I mean, you know, what a difference a year makes, right? Um, again, if we reflect back on what uh, what um, online retailers and brands uh, and businesses were, were expecting heading into 2022, they were expecting a, a, a very robust continuation of, of strong business results and expecting a fair bit of growth um, heading into heading into 2022. But in it's sort of the flip side. Uh, heading into 2023, 
uh, online uh, brands and retailers and, and so forth are really looking at, at fairly modest growth. Um, you know, essentially half are reflecting, you know, flat to single digit growth. There are probably 25% who are forecasting, um, you know, north of 20. Again, depending on your, your segment, um, you may feel very comfortable, uh, you know, planning and forecasting that. But certainly the economic environment remains challenging, um, you know, and depending on your demographic, your, your income brackets and where you live, uh, you know, you may be, um, you know, feeling very comfortable or you may be concerned uh, as a consumer heading into 2023. And obviously the media plays a big role in that, right? Um, concerns around potential recession, which are well-founded, you know, two thirds of economists are forecasting some kind of a recession in 2023, hopefully a relatively modest and short <laughs> recession uh, in the overall economy, but consumers are obviously picking up on that news as well as all the news heading into uh, 2023 around, you know, layoffs and, and job security plays a role um, in that. Um, and so, you know, 2023 from a kind of a macro business environment perspective, um, you know, is one where everyone's looking at it fairly conservatively and kind of planning accordingly. Um, if the war in Ukraine, let's have our fingers crossed and, and you know, our, our thoughts on uh, hopefully uh, peace, uh, you know, coming, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure that that's necessarily the case, but if, for example, some of these sort of geopolitical factors were to ease, we may see uh, a change, right? And obviously we're also somewhat dependent on the global economy and with China struggling with COVID right now and the impact that that has on consumption as well as on a supply chain, you know, a lot of businesses are, are really thinking about their business fairly conservatively heading into the year. Um, that said, it is very interesting to recognize that um, while large capital investments, larger technology projects and so forth may see some pause, um, you know, as, as retailers and brands kind of say, OK, well, let's see what happens. Um, we do see a lot of focus on, uh, you know, key areas and it sounds self-serving, but this is grounded in, you know, in, 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 in data that we, you know, will soon be releasing as a part of Comex and our Commerce Next partnership, we see areas like personalization and site optimization very high uh, on the priority list. You know, almost 90% of online brands and retailers looking at personalization as an important uh, investment area, you know, by far the highest. And other areas like mobile optimization, uh, product discovery, uh, you know, also very high as people look to optimize against the traffic and the customer bases they already have. And on the marketing side, continuing shift from a kind of an acquisition marketing focus to really, you know, bread and butter, retention marketing. We see uh, email, SMS, uh, seeing uh, investment, again, leveraging personalization to be more relevant and try to get better results. Uh, from the file that you already, you know, have and the customers you're already serving and really focus on reactivating those customers um, who purchased from you over the last year, two years, right? Uh, and trying to drive that repurchase rate up versus focusing on uh, customer acquisition. And, you know, unfortunately, the big loser uh, in terms of that will be Meta where we see you know, ongoing impacts of the consumer data privacy changes, both regulatory and Apple iOS uh, changes that came in maybe some time ago. But obviously, you know, Google will be rolling out further changes and we see the impact. Social KPIs took a big hit in 2022. Um, and so I think it's almost two thirds of brands and retailers will be reducing spend with Meta uh, in, in 2023. You know, TikTok will see more investment, but it's not a proven uh, marketing channel yet, right? It's it's it, it can be surprising uh, results I mean, in a positive way in many ways, but you know we'll see we'll see some incremental investment there. But we see a move away from acquisition and social, uh, more spending on uh, search marketing, and again retention being uh, kind of the key marketing tactic most are focused on. So we'll see, uh, you know, further uh, investment in 
consumer loyalty and ways in which you can really uh, focus on your existing customers, uh, drive more personalization and drive a relationship. And we'll see some interesting testing with things like, um, you know, chat GPT and other things too, to try to, you know, increase uh, a sense of relationship at scale uh, in 2023, although those will be early tests and we'll have to see, you know, uh, how that how that really uh, plays out. So focus on, you know, again, site optimization, personalization and retention marketing will be the key themes, I think in 2023 from a, from a project and investment perspective. And obviously at Bloomreach, we're, 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 we're happy to see that while at the same time recognizing that the, the market conditions for many retailers and brands are challenging. And, you know, our, there'll be a lot of scrutiny on ROI cases and the benefits that you can gain from, from the projects you, you pick. Yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting to see when we're here a year from now what this conversation is going to sound like. Uh, and I know everyone tuning in today is very interested to see how those predictions pan out. So thank you for that. That is it for our event today that flew by. Uh, thank you, Brian, for all of those insights. Uh, to hear more from Brian here, you can check him out on LinkedIn. That's Brian Walker. Or you can take a listen to his podcast, Commerce Experience. With that, thank you all for joining us. And we hope to see you again at our next Commerce Pulse Quarterly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining, everyone. Take care.